Hey, what's going on YouTube? Thank you for coming back to another episode of Scatterbrancy. My name is Travis and I'm here to do another video um, that might be a little bit controversial. Uh, if you saw my video about Kimberell and then the video about the gay hypocrites, this video goes right along with all of those. Um, I don't want anybody to think that I'm only able to talk about one side or that I'm not able to see wrong in all sides. For me, right is right and wrong is wrong. And I can see wrong in everything. I can see wrong no matter who it is that's doing it. So just like I talked about that community in my last video being hypocrites, it's only right that I talk about the black church community being hypocrites as well, because that is a community that I belong to. So I feel like I should be able to talk about them just like I talk about a community that I'm not a part of. Um, if you're going to see me looking over during this video, just excuse that. I'm trying to record my audio a different way, so I'm just monitoring the, the, the software I'm using to make sure that it's working. So that's why I keep looking over to the side. But, so the whole issue with the Kimberrell sermon that she had did, like, right around New Year's happened. And, you know, a lot of people had a lot of things to say about her from both sides, you know, from the gay community and from the, the church community. Um, and it didn't really seem like there was much... And this is like there were many people who were like taken up for her or anything like that, which I kind of didn't understand. And I guess that's a whole nother video for another time. So maybe that'll be the fourth video in the series. But I wanted to talk about hypocrisy in the black church. And the reason why I wanted to talk about it is because I feel like as a Christian, that's one of the main things that turns people away from Christianity. That's one of the main things that turns people away from God and getting to know Jesus and all of that. It's just that people aren't living the lives that they're preaching. People aren't living the lives that they say that they're living. And it's really easy to spot those kind of people. And when people are looking for a spiritual connection to Jesus or God, when they're looking to when they're looking for healing and looking for guidance because they're at a cross crossroads or in a dark place in their life, when they come to the church, they should come to the church and feel like the people who are giving them the message or the sermon are actually practicing what they preach you know I, to me it's a simple concept you know practice what you preach but for many people in the church it's not that simple um there are a lot of people in the church who live one life in church and they live another life outside of church um i can only speak for myself and i only speak for myself and say that everything that i've said on my channel from for the past or for as long as i can remember you know any advice that i give out on my channel is advice that i would take or i've taken at some point in my life it's something that I would actually practice I don't ever tell any of my subscribers to do anything that I wouldn't do myself you know considering the circumstances of the situation that they're in so I don't think it's right that there are many people in the church who tell people during their sermons or their uh, speeches or whatever it is they're delivering that they tell people to live a certain kind of way but they're not living that kind of way themselves you know you see all of these stories where pastors come out because they've been touching on little boys or they've been having an affair on their spouse with somebody else in the church. And it does not, it's not a good look for the church at all. You know, and for the people who, who see those stories, just as a side note, keep in mind that at the end of the day, preachers, deacons, whomever, myself, we're all humans. We all fall short of the glory. We all make mistakes. That's, that does not give anybody a pass to do wrong. That doesn't give anybody the right to do wrong. That's that's just that's just the truth. We all make mistakes and we all do things that we wish we could take back. But the main thing for me is at the end of the day, are you trying to live the best life that you can that's going to please God and serve the purpose that you're here for on this earth, whether you know what it is or not? For me, that's what I'm always trying to do. So I'm not the kind of Christian, you know, to get on YouTube. And y'all know that my, my faithful subscribers know that I don't get on here passing out scriptures or telling people that they're going to go to hell or anything like that that's not me that's not what i do just because like i said in one of my other videos i don't have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in and that's not ever going to be my stance to tell somebody else where they're going because like i said if i don't know where i'm going i can't tell anybody else where they're going however what i can do is i can say what's right and what's wrong and hypocrisy in the church is absolutely wrong i will never ever make excuses for it because it's not okay I was raised, <clears throat> just a little bit of history as far as my walk with God, I was raised in the church. Both of my parents were in the church, so obviously I was in the church too. Um, ever since I was little, I was in the children's choir, and up until I decided to leave the children's choir, when I left the children's choir, I joined the usher board, so my mom made sure that I did something. She told me that if you, even if you're not going to be in the choir, you got to do something in the church, so that's when I ended up joining the usher's ministry. 
before I left off and went to college. And when I got to college, I was able to kind of explore my Christianity and, you know, kind of really get in touch with my relationship with God. And I am the kind of person who believes in more of relationship than I believe in religion. Um, relationship to me, relationship with God is more important than the religion. Um, I was raised in a Presbyterian church. I don't necessarily go to that church anymore just because I don't really like the pastor that they have in right now just because he doesn't really, we don't, I don't connect to anything that he says. So I've been going to a Baptist church. Mostly my wife and I have been going to a Baptist church lately, which is probably the church we're going to end up joining. So I was raised in a church and I've seen things that are, that should not have happened in the church. And I have done things that I have should not, that I should not have done. I feel like I'm getting my words all mixed up. But it's unfortunate that the church gets such a bad reputation for the actions of a few. Um, I know from experience that all churches are not bad churches. All pastors are not janky, um, like low down people who are just about money. You know, there are great churches out here who are doing great work in the community. There are great pastors out here who are doing great work in the community. The pastor that was over the church that I went to up until he left maybe about five or five or six years ago was it is an amazing man he's still alive um I really appreciate the stuff that he's done for me in my life as well as my wife's pastor who counseled us during our premarital counseling both of them are just great examples for what a man of God is now let me say this I'm not stupid I'm pretty sane I got a little bit of sense and I know that no man is perfect. I don't put any person in the church on a pedestal. I don't believe that the pastor is better than anybody in the church. That's not kind of how I look at it. At the end of the day, he's a man or a woman, you know, just like me, and they're going to make mistakes. So I don't hold them to a different standard than I hold myself. <sighs> but I hate that the actions of us as a community, being the actions of the Christian community, turns people off from God because at the end of the day our main goal is to bring people to Christ so that they can get to know him so that they can invite him into their life and see the amazing things that he can do but it's all of the extra stuff that we do that causes people to not even want to get to know God because we're, we're that wall <laughs> we're that wall that is blocking people from getting to know him and as a Christian, I'm saying to any other Christians who are watching my videos, you have to make sure that you are not standing in the way of somebody getting to know God or preventing somebody from getting to know God. And what you have to understand is, and I almost feel like I'm getting kind of about to get emotional, but I'm gonna try to hold my, I'm gonna try to hold it together. Uh, Kirk Franklin had a song that I listened to a lot, and it was on maybe two or three CDs ago, and it was called "The Last Jesus." And in the song, he talks about what if you are the last, what if you're the only Jesus that somebody sees? You know, what if somebody just can't, they feel like they can't get to God. They feel like they can't get to Jesus. They feel like they can't make that connection. And what if you are the only shining light that they have in their life to know that he is real, to know that he will accept them just the way that they are, no matter their flaws, no matter the sins that they've committed, he will take them at face value and he will be there for them. What if you're the only person who can be the representation of that? What are you going to do now knowing that? And ever since I heard that song, that's kind of, why do I feel like I want to cry? Oh my God. And ever since I heard that song, that really changed the way that I try to live my life. I never cried on the video and I don't want, I want this to be the last. I always try to make sure that no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am, that I'm... Get it together, Travis. I've always tried to make sure that I'm an example for who God is and what God can do in somebody else's life. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. I did not plan on... I did not think this was going to happen. I'm sorry, y'all. The thing is, God has been really good to me, and I don't know where I would be without him. I don't know where I would be without his love and him being by my side when I wasn't doing right, and I knew I wasn't doing right, because I'm not going to sit here and act like I've lived my whole life doing the right thing, that I haven't made mistakes, that I haven't 
chosen to go right when I knew he was telling me to go left. You know, I've been there and I'm a living witness to get your life together, sir. <laughs> get it together. Thug. You are a thug. Keep it that way. Excuse me. I'm a living example that, you know, no matter what it is that you're going through, he will be there for you. And he will accept you as exactly as you are and he will work with you. But you have to trust in him. And I know it's easy when you're when you're in that gray spot and you're not really sure if you want to go towards God. It's really easy to be swayed and to see the negative things that are surrounding Christianity and think, oh, I'm not going to go down that road because I see how messy it is. But again, I say relationship is is more important to me than religion. And. I'm not saying that you don't need church. I think church is a good place to fellowship with other people who are trying to get their life together. But outside of church, you can have a relationship with God no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. All it takes is just you opening your heart to being able to receive him and to being able to accept the blessings that he has for you. But you just have to be open and it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be comfortable because the thing is, anytime you're making a change, Things get uncomfortable. And I think that that's what scares a lot of us, you know, myself included, is just being uncomfortable when it comes to the change that can happen when God comes into your life. And this video was supposed to be about hypocrites in the church. And now I think I'm like giving my testimony or something. I'm clearly off track about where I was supposed to be going right now. But I guess when the spirit leads you, you got to go. So. As Christians, we have to do a better job of bringing people to God. And being a better example of who God is. And, you know, that's who I am on YouTube. You know, I'm not a preacher. I'm not trying to be a preacher because I don't know the Bible word for word. I can't just spit off a scripture. But what I can do is give people advice and try to tell people what I think makes sense and go and how to go straight, even though everything else is pulling you to the left and the right. Because when I tell you, oh my God, when I tell you, I've been through some stuff that I didn't ever think. I was going to make it through like stuff I've never talked to anybody about. And I may never ever talk to anybody about, but I, there have been moments where I have been in darkness and I needed God to show up and I let him show up in my life and do some amazing things. And he's still doing some amazing things. At the end of the day, they're going to be hypocrites everywhere. The church is not a perfect place and you're never going to find a perfect church. You're never going to find a perfect Christian. So I think when you can remove that expectation, your journey to find God and your journey to find Christ to be a whole lot easier. But we as Christians, we got to do a better job of, of our representation of the church and our representation of God. Oh, my God. Y'all, I really just knew that I was going to talk about that and I was not going to go here. But I'm still going to post this video with no edits because I feel like I don't ever show y'all this side of me. And this is a part of who I am. But when I say God has been good to me, y'all, God has been good to me. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to leave it at that before I, like, make the ugly cry. <sighs> okay. I am so sorry. I probably shouldn't be apologizing. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Um, I have no clue what I intend to talk about, but hey, whatever. So, uh, make sure you like, rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You know, leave any comments or things you want me to talk about. If you have any questions, please email them to scatterbrancy at yahoo.com. Shout out to Elias. I hope I'm saying your name wrong. I hope, I hope I'm saying your name right um, for sending me that email you sent earlier today. I truly appreciate it. And I'm going to go get my life together. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace. Mm.